and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Last week I showed you the colour mixing and colour combinations for white objects. This week I will show you how I put this into practice painting this spaniel. As it was a commission I cannot show you the original photo. Let's get straight into the video and I will speak about what I am doing as I go along. This painting revolves around the two colour complementaries of orange and blue and yellow and purple. For the black areas, I am using my rich black of burnt umber, which has an orange leaning, and my ultramarine deep, which is a blue. Mixed together, it will give me this black, but it has the advantage of being a warm, cool palette. Brown is my warm, blue is my cool. If I show you this colour mixed on my palette, you will see how dark it is. When I mix orange into blue and vice versa, it begins to desaturate my colour. It pulls the punch out of it and gives me more of a neutral. Think about this in terms of a scale. On one side, I have orange brown, warm, and on the other, blue, cool. I am going to paint the black areas of the dog within this range. I am also thinking about my palette in terms of value, that is light and dark. My rich black is my darkest area and white is my lightest. Again, think about it in terms of a scale going from black to white. If I turn my finished painting into black and white, you will see how my value changes across the painting. Notice that there is a very limited value range in the black areas, but much more of a value range in the white areas. That is why it is harder to paint white objects. For every shape that I attempt to paint in that black fur, I need to ask myself, how light or dark is it? I then need to ask myself, is it warm or is it cool? It's important to remember that white is a cool colour. Adding it will not only lighten, but affect the temperature of your mix. So when I lighten my black, I may also need to adjust the temperature by adding more brown. Moving around my black areas briefly, you can see that my very black areas are warm. So I need to have more brown in my black. The reflected light in the room is causing a colour shift and my black begins to change towards blue. It is also getting a bit lighter, so I need to add a bit of white. I've probably shifted down my scale to about here. I still have my brown in my mix, but the white has also affected the temperature. And I don't want to overdo the blue. You can see the subtle shifts across all these areas. To get that really black black, I need a couple of layers of rich black paint. As I'm painting on paper, it's pretty dry the next day and I can go over it again. I'm using a Rosemary Eclipse Coma brush to give me that really soft brush stroke. It is the same principle for the white area, but this time I am using the complementary colours of yellow and purple. You must use yellow ochre light or yellow ochre pale as your yellow. No other yellow will work. Yellow is warm and purple is cool. Again, think of it as a sliding scale. I am always painting somewhere in this temperature range, depending upon what I think I am seeing. But what about my value? I have replaced my rich black with a black made from cadmium red and ultramarine deep. If I show you my palette again, you will see how dark it is. I then have the option of having a warm purple with more red or a cooler purple with more blue. If I want to lighten my black, I have the choice of white, orange, cadmium red and yellow ochre light, or yellow, yellow ochre light. Transparent oxide yellow will not affect the value of my dark colours because it is transparent. It is a useful colour to mix into my blacks if I want to push them further yellow, as I have done in this area, without affecting my value too much. As I attempt to paint shape in the white fur, I ask myself, what value is it and what temperature is it? Painting the white areas is much harder because very often my yellow may stray into orange, as it has done in this area here. I also have the issue of reflected colour. So here the collar is casting more of a green shadow in this area. 
I also found that my purples were both warm and cool. To warm my purples up, I was adding an orange, yellow ochre light plus cad red. Cadmium red on its own would have been too warm and overpowered my mix. Orange is a better choice for this reason. Or I could just add a generous amount of yellow ochre light to my purple, which would give me a different hue. My advice is to experiment with the different colour combinations, but always bear in mind if you are trying to make your colour warmer or cooler, this will affect your choice. Because this area is really quite warm, my paint mixes had a lot of yellow ochre light in them. When I have added my highlights in white, it gives a lovely sense of form and you really feel like the light is hitting the front of that dog. This is because I have the cool of the white placed next to the warm of the yellow. If you haven't managed to create that sense of form in your painting, it will be because you have got your temperatures wrong. If it is muddy, you've gone overboard on your warm colour and if it is chalky, the issue is too many cool colours. Whatever you are painting, it is very important to paint in a logical order if attempting a la prima painting. So, for example, background, back legs, blanket, collar, chest and head. I want to make sure when painting my edges that I am pulling the paint of my front object into my back object. For example, I pull the paint of the ears into the background. If I do it the other way around, it will look like my background is behind the ears. Always be aware of how your shapes all fit together. I can start with my eyes, but I just need to be aware I may run into difficulties if I don't move onto the background before I try to paint the ears. I would also recommend painting your most obvious areas first. By this, I mean the areas that you can see clearly in terms of value and temperature. This then makes it easier to gauge the other areas you may not be sure about. Finally, think about the direction of your brush strokes. I have very clear shadow lines in these two areas, which run contrary to my contour lines. I need to remember that my fur lays in this direction and also this direction. Laying my paint in the same direction will help me suggest the dog's form. And there we have it, the finished painting. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.